step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 66, titled Revelation 20. Satan prepares for war, featuring Mike from COT on the End Generation Project. Originally aired on April 12, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com, see link in description. This episode delves into Bible study, highlighting eschatology amidst today's challenges. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore these peculiar circumstances in this riveting episode number 66. To understand exploring the profound interplay, visit the Council of Time on their only official website linked in description. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction who simultaneously seeking God's free grace and guidance. Your support drives our mission to guide individuals toward truth, sobriety, and preparedness for what is described in scripture as perilous times. Join our exclusive local community for EGP family members and have early access to many exclusive features. Be sure to check out our new merchandise line featured in today's video as well as welcoming our newest EGP project contributors who are also featured in today's video. If we missed your name for this week, please not to worry. We edit new video once every week or two depending on our workload and manpower. Thank you for being a vital part of the success of the End Generation Project. Now, before we finally get into today's rebroadcast podcast, Revelation 20, Satan Prepares for War, Episode 66, let's celebrate the remarkable growth of our channel. We just blew past 10th and subscribers and slowly gaining subscriptions on our locals and Kofi community. This reflects the hunger among believers for truth in these end generation times. It's truly a blessing to see our content reaching audiences worldwide with translations available in over 12 languages. As we journey through 2024 together, we're committed to keeping this channel ad-free thanks to your local subscriptions. Would you consider joining our vibrant communities on Locals and Kofi for prayer requests and shout-outs like you will see in this video? All right, now let's dive into today's podcast, Revelation 20. Satan prepares for war on End Generation Projects rebroadcast podcast number 66 with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. volume is uh, good to go is it good you guys i can see mixler i can't see anybody else let's pull everybody else up you guys know what uh, today is anybody anybody know what it is the book of esther or or the liberation, the celebration of the liberation of the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. It's fine. Or do you have that to be? Do you guys have, we have to put the Jewish calendar up on the site. Here's the reason why. Is, uh, the original dates given to the Jews by prophets, those were given by the living God to them, right? To keep certain things, to be in remembrance of certain things. And I think that one thing in our lifetime that has happened is a severe loss of identity. Also, it seems everybody is defining God to who they want him to be. Right, um, And that seems to be okay with a lot of people. With me, it's not. To identify the Most High for who he is is important to me. Right? Not, not to have God be anybody I want. I don't want him to be like 
if, if the father is anything like me, all right, it's game over right now, right? Couldn't have that. I wouldn't want him to be as like me at all. A lot of people do, though. They want him to be a specific way. I don't. I want to learn who he is. Really learn who he is. Really learn. So as it wasn't an asteroid or did something come out of the deep. Regarding the ice pack, any questions regarding the ice pack, give me a courtesy of checking on a few things before I go into any topics about the ice pack, please. That way, I'm in the clear, and uh, so is everybody else. Will that be okay? Hopefully, that will be okay. Right? I don't want to speculate. Um, truth these days is most valuable. To speculate is just to tell a good story. That's not going to help anybody. And uh, tonight, right, um, boy, do we have to address some things. We do. Listen, and I'll take full blame for this. Full blame. But COT is a different platform altogether. One thing I have, uh, I sat back so long, I guess I got comfortable not doing it, is one of the reasons I'm called that I identify with has to deal with those people who have, who are stuck. They're really stuck in the middle regarding faith in several things. But the people who have had these extraordinary experiences, right? And they are stuck. The individuals who contemplate a bit more than anything that's being told, and they're stuck. The folks who are not liberated, they're not in bondage by way of the flesh, but they are by way of the mind. Seeking and searching what to believe regarding all things, right? Because if we were to tell the truth, this topic about uh, extraterrestrials, demonic entities, whatever you want to call them, it's not defined in a biblical way yet. Right? A lot of people don't know how to categorize it. Now, I have to cover that here. I know that in my lifetime, something is happening. In fact, this takes us to the book of Revelation. Uh, but something is happening. And everything in my life has been, well, you could say evidence pointing to this one thing. I can't get it to you. you know, something that um, I can never forget, nor altered. I can't do that. And yes, I'm extremely worn out, tired, you name it. You name it, I am. I, I tried and gave assistance anywhere I could the last few days. And believe me, I'm older. Let's put it that way. I used to be able to do that, no problem. Come back, I'm good to go, right? I'm a bit older. I think I went too long this time. I do. But it's okay. The body can recuperate. In the book of Revelation, let's turn there real quick. Let's go there real quick so I can get uh, everybody up to speed on what I'm about to say. Because it, everything is pointing towards this one thing. Everything is. Everything is. So we, we're going to start from the back and uh, work our way forward. Let me... Go here real quick. I'm going to be in Revelation. Let me pull this up real quick. I'm going to be in Revelation. Revelation 20. Actually. Actually. Yeah. Revelation 20. We're going to go backward. It's important to note here in Revelation 20. Right? We're going to be talking about after Satan is loosed. This is extremely important. After Satan is loose. Revelation 20 verse 7 says, After the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog, Magog, to gather them together to battle. 
the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. No relief, tormented. So what he did was horrific. But what is his what is he doing? What is he doing with all of what he's doing in everybody's life? What is he doing? Well, look at this. When Satan is loosed out of his prison, he goes out to fulfill what he's been attempting to do, which is to deceive the nations of the earth. Right? Listen, to bring, to gather them together to the battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And what did they do? They went upon the breath of the earth and they compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. The beloved city, we know what that is, right? New Jerusalem. Uh, they, they, they surrounded the New Jerusalem. Now listen to me. The New Jerusalem is not some brick and mortar city. That's not what it is. The New Jerusalem, right, descends out of heaven to earth. We all know this. Um, where the Lord is reigning on earth is, is Zion is sanctified at that time, right? There's much holiness in the earth. There is a rule and reign with Christ. So that means the heavenlies can be clearly seen here on the earth. Their minds, though, are so warped and twisted that they would first be deceived gather themselves together to go to battle against Jesus of Nazareth. Not like now, because they can't see him now. We're talking about going to war with the saints, or against the saints and Christ, surrounding the beloved city. Hmm? This is what Satan has been doing. So this, Revelation 20, shows us what Satan really wants. It shows us what he wants. That means, let's go back now because this is a final battle. This is very important. This is a final battle. This is when Satan musters all of his forces in the earth. Anybody who, who he has deceived, and according to the word of God, he deceived everybody on the face of the earth, right? That he could deceive. And he said, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, that's a lot of people, right? That's a lot of people. So they go against the living God. They go against Christ. They go against the saints, all the holiness they, they see, right? And the beloved city. They go against it. And the only reason they lost is fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Right? So this is what he wants. This is called war. That's what this is. This is war. This is war. He wants this war. Now remember, that's very important. Prior to this thousand years, what was he doing? What was happening? Anybody? Prior to him being chained up in Revelation 21... Prior to him being chained up, what was he doing? Anybody know what he was doing? Anybody have a clue what he was doing? Those three unclean spirits. We know about those, right? Three unclean spirits, right? The three unclean spirits. We read about those three unclean spirits. We read what these three unclean spirits were doing, right? What they were, what they were after. And they went out to the what? To the kings of the earth. To the, to the, everybody they could go out to, right? All the people of the earth they went out to. But to do what? To do what? To deceive them that dwell on the earth. To gather them. To make them come down to that valley. Right? This is what the three unclean spirits are doing. So the end result is war. Satan musters 
the totality of the earth against God and his holy dwelling and all those that dwell there. And Satan, prior to that time, he reigned over the beast kingdom, right? The beast was in the earth, and the beast is under the power, or, or he's operating by the authority and power, and the seat of, of Satan himself, of the dragon himself, right? That term dragon implies rule over the demons and everything else. These three unclean spirits are working thing they're working miracles in the earth right now right right now they're unclean now here's what's funny this is where this conversation uh, by the way that's revelation 16 13 let's do that real quick and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world so they go into the kings of the earth and anybody who will follow those kings in this language, the way it's set up, right? Anytime something is mentioned, the head of anything is mentioned, and then there's a, a, a conjunction with a conditional statement, right, added to it, then you know it's in the context of one. So all these people who worship the kings of the earth, they're the ones, when they follow the kings of the earth, and they do so blindly, like today. Let's go ahead and face it, like today, right? Anybody who justifies these kings of the earth are following them blindly. But these kings of the earth are being affected by something right now. Right now. These things are in the earth. Now, stay with me. Stay with me. How long have they been doing this? Because... Prior to this, prior to this, the kingdom of the beast is established. And the Bible is telling us in Revelation 16, 13, where these three unclean spirits were and what they were doing. They came out of the mouth of the dragon. Speech. Out of the mouth of the false prophet. Right? Out of the mouth of the beast. So the beast, the dragon... Um, came out of the dragon, the beast, and the uh, false prophet. They were working miracles. Listen to me, working miracles. What miracles are they working? Well, let's share that with you, shall I? Somebody's driving with their family somewhere, and all of a sudden they see lights in the skies. And they go, ooh, ah, and they can't believe it. That's, you know what that is, don't you? When something defies physics, and that's what these things do. When something defies the natural course of things in the earth going through walls, right? Tampering with people's sleeps, implanting memories, act physically taking people. These are what? Miracles. Wondrous works. In other words, they're works beyond the normal. Are you listening to me? They're works beyond the normal. One of the number one problems in the world right now is what? Abduction. People believe they have been abducted by aliens and tampered with, but they're not aliens. Time to identify what they really are. These are miracles. These ships are vessels. Even the government who has presented the evidence to you guys, who has shown you those clips, these things vanish into thin air. These things defy anything of physics. These things have no friction, generate no heat. One of them left a, a, a contrail around the whole earth, and that contrail stayed airborne for 19 hours. That's a work beyond the natural. That's a miracle, right? That's what that is. They're working. It didn't say they were working good miracles. It said they were working miracles. So now you know you can have deceitful miracles. You can have deceitful miracles. A miracle just simply states that something is beyond the natural. It does not classify if it's good or not, if it's in your favor or not. These things were working miracles. You know, before the Black Plague, you know what people saw? Do you guys know what they saw? They saw those lights. They also saw a war in the heavens. 
They saw spheres, black ones and white ones, and cylindrical objects letting out these orbs all over the place, and some of the light ones would absorb the black ones and vice versa. And it was, it was everybody saw this thing. Shortly after that, some of these lights descended upon the fields and the, and the forests of the earth, and a figure came out. And as the figure moved across the land, it sprayed out some mist. This is right before the Black Plague. It sprayed out a mist. These things then vanished into thin air, and all of a sudden, they had the Black Plague. Do you not know before every single plague, there's a story just like that? Why do people record the exact same story? Why have they inscribed these stories in stone? Because Satan has been working on something this entire time. To deceive people. To cause people to be responsive to a call of war against God and his holy ones. Do you hear me what I'm saying? Now I'm telling you this because I'll give you a fact. There is a clock humanity did not build. And that clock is running. That clock is counting down to something called war. The word war is on that clock. But it's not written by human hands, nor made by human tools. Anywhere you find those things, a base for those things, you're going to see these clocks. And these clocks are counting down, and they are in a rush, working diligently to meet the date of this war that is soon to begin. You know what they're talking about, don't you? They're talking about the war. See, there's only one war Satan is concerned about. It is not a war with the angels. That's already been done. No. Because after investigations happened, and I've never heard anybody say what I'm saying right now. I've never heard anybody say this, have you guys? In all honesty, have you heard anybody say what I'm saying right now? Has anybody ever heard this from anybody? It's not that I'm the only guy that would ever say it. No. No. I just want to make clear you haven't heard this before. That means I didn't get it from anybody. That means as soon as I, as soon as this leaves COT, I'm telling you right now, you're going to hear this story over and over and over and over again. I want you guys to see that because it will be distorted. Now, let me continue. So they're working miracles. But listen, listen, after investigation, after investigation, all these people who investigate abductees, they have the same message. A strange people who are not in communication with each other. And this began, the, the recordings of this began back in the 1400s. In the 1400s. That's when they began documenting it, that we can read, right, back in the 1400s. But the people who were taken, they continually say the same consistent things. Same things. Number one, these things get them. If they see more than one figure, normally, through the course of, the, of this abduction, you know, thing over the course of their lives, they end up seeing three three of them. Whatever they are, they end up seeing three. Not everybody sees uh, the little guys with the black eyes. It's on military dockets. Many have recorded seeing something that looks like a praying mantis that will scare the peanuts out of your m and ms You see them in threes. And they communicate with the people. And when the people ask, what are you doing? They'll tell them we're changing your DNA. They also convey a type of care or love. I don't believe it's real. Huh? I believe they only convey this so people buy the story. They tamper with genetic material. But here's what you have not heard. The majority of the folks who have been abducted 
they tell a story, the same story. They say that they have been put through multiple scenarios where they have to go and kill. They have to take somebody's life. These people, after going through this for the first few times, are sickened to their core. They're sickened. But they're always given the same communication that one day, one day, they're going to be needed to fight the battle of battles. Listen to me. That means people here on this earth are going to be turned on like a light switch. And when they're turned on like a light switch, they're going to be doing whatever their, their masters have put in them to do. The instructions are sewn into them. The instructions are embedded into them. They will know what to do when the time comes. Each and every person that was on a follow-up investigation of this, kind of like surveillance, right? Each and every person, they always said the same thing. They always said, when I tried to live among the human race or normal, these things would not let them. Something would always happen. And they were drawn back to these simulations, these dreams of killing these horrific creatures and beasts. One guy said he fought something that looked like a giant, um, um, hawkish thing, a blobbish, hawkish thing. And then after he killed it, it ended up being an average person. And they asked these people, well, would you be able to do this in real life? And the people said, I would have no choice. They said, I have no choice. You have good people out there. Good people out there who research this subject, but they believe in Christ. They have found the implants. They have tested the implants. They know the range of the implants. They even know how they work now. And it simply looks like a rock in your skin. It, but it's never rejected by the body. Here's the part that's going to get you. These folks complain about the same thing, which drove them to a medical facility to get the implant out. See, once they began praying, the tones became louder. What tones? The tones all of these people perceived by the ear. And before any of you think, well, say, that can't be true, I, I know of some folks who have met folks who had been in the who had been taken also they say they meet each other do you, do you understand i know that for a fact having orchestrated a reunion of types or been a part of that just kind of observing i've seen it happen i've seen people that don't know each other right call each other's number and by looking and tracing records, there's no way they should have ever had that person's number. Which means both were taken. Both those people woke up at the wrong time. They witnessed what they witnessed. And they never forgot the phone number of the other person that was taken. To them, it's like a dream, right? But how do you, how could that, how can you capture each other's phone numbers in a dream? Do you guys know that thousands of people meet up that way? So let's say that phenomena is false. It doesn't matter. These people are still meeting up. These people can still be switched on and off. You remember last night, Pastor Paul was talking about this guy that all abruptly was demon possessed. Just like that. You remember what he said about the past Paul said this person was that wasn't this character. And all of a sudden, for the first time, he something changed and he killed his oh, bad baby. And he went berserk in the house. Right? There are too many stories like that. The exact same story. My mind. And what are they doing? What are they doing? They're being convinced that they have to fight something. Which means, listen, if these three unclean spirits are in the mouth of the dragon, the false prophet, and the beast, and they're deceiving the kings of the earth 
and of the whole world by reason of miracles and everything they can do. They're doing this so that people can be mustered to battle. But I believe, I strongly believe, People are freely giving themselves over to a degree that something else at a specific point will take over. I was born with that warning. So we have that, right? This is where these other things fit in. They fit in. And the women who have been tampered with, right, they have real scar tissue. Some of the some of the uh, medical reports state that it looks like some of these women have been pregnant over twenty times. Some of the people who are taken overnight, they're bought back with scars. Did you hear me? Scars. Listen to me. You you don't go away with no scars and come back with a scar in one night. You don't do that. It takes longer than that for something to heal, wouldn't you think? So how can a person come back with a, they call them like a four-month scar or a one-year scar? In other words, it takes about a year for the body to heal that wound, to heal that scar in a way that it would, you know, be very difficult to tell. So how can they go missing? in one night and come back with scars like that that are totally healed that have in fact months of healing and all of it happens in one night let me reiterate don't let that fascinate you because time is for us not for them if you notice in the bible all time based things are given to mankind God does not need him they didn't need them. We need them. We need them. So time is for us. That's what time is for. All right, everybody have that. So there's a war coming, a real one, and the clock is counting down. Those clocks are real. They know that from various things. Right? I believe that uh, some of these aircraft manufacturers have two of those clocks. They still don't know how they work. But they're counting down. The, this, these materials, these beings, they defy all physics. They do. They defy everything. They do what is just not normal. Right? So it kind of gives you a hint that they're not like a, a real extraterrestrial. No, because a real extraterrestrial would be prone to the physics we have here on this earth. They would not go through water and not make a ripple. They would not hit the speed of sound and yet never have any cavity bubble around them. It doesn't happen because you break the sound barrier when you do that. So where's the sonic boom? They know they have them on radar going from zero to 10,000 miles an hour within seconds. Where is the sonic boom. I've noticed something else. People they're marking. Folks, I'm going to be back in a few minutes right here at COT to jump into the other portion of this. I hope I don't bore you tonight. I want you guys to see this so that you can do something about it. That's what I'm hoping. Too many people are falling prey to it. See, here, here's something. You don't really know if you've been affected or not. You don't. It's almost impossible to see if you've been affected by these things or not. I'll be right back in a few minutes right here at COT, everybody. Can you even hear me? Okay, now I'm back. I wasn't back. My apologies. Just so you guys know, because it was just doing some load balancing. And I have a note here to let you guys know this. Uh, but um, we have 100 plus gigs going out, right? It's probably, let me see, it's probably near 100, 100, 148, 148 gig going out. After the 16th, we go back up to uh, a little closer to what we used to be so we can handle 
what we need to handle. Okay, so that's uh, that that's gonna that's gonna be a a big uh, it's gonna be a big deal, right? Because our, right now our sound gets choppy, everything gets jumbled up, you know, and uh, code is slow and running this that, and the other. So it is a known fact uh, that we can. We, we are at the borderline at 150. So on the 16th of this month, after the 16th of this month, then we go back up to closer to our regular bandwidth. Again, right now it's at 148 gigs going up, going up and out. Which is, you know, for one computer, that will be okay, right? Uh, not for a bunch of uh, chat rooms. It, doesn't work that way. It is choking and straining, and it's uh, it's just not good quality anymore. So, uh, once they get the uh, fiber that goes in after the sixteenth, um, we're getting that done. So our bandwidth goes; it goes way up. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure we'll clear up a lot of sound issues. Plus, we're getting into video. There's no way we could run video right now. Not at uh, not at 150 gig going up. It just wouldn't happen. Anyway, that's where we are with that. Back to our conversation. Um, as I said before, in the book of Revelation, Satan is preparing for this. And he's preparing billions of people for this. So let me give you guys an insight on something. All too often, people are doing things by a suggestive force, but it's in the secular world. And, um, for example, I'm, there's a person who wears a crystal necklace. And without, with that crystal necklace, this person is directed to do things. But, but here's the catcher. When this person is directed to do things, it normally works out perfectly, right? It normally works out perfectly. So, but we know what that is. That is not the father. It is not the father. Okay? That's another one of those tactics. I also believe that person is marked. In other words, when the time comes for this person to truly pick a side, this person is going to be totally controlled. In fact, a long time ago, and Angela is the only one I told about this dream one time because it really bothered me, and it had to do with the evacuations on the East Coast once they begin, once they have chemical sniffers on the East Coast. But... I remember these people in tents, and they were, you know, just normal people. But then these these orbs or discs or these lit up things were in the skies. And they would come down, they would come, and the person would, went on, they would zap the person. Well, when they did this, you could take up, the person was soulless at that point. You could take a person and, and move their arm in a position, and that person would leave their arm there until their muscles failed. They would do nothing on their own, which means they were more like, uh, um, uh, they, they had like drone behavior of a beehive. They would do nothing on their own. When it went back, when I could see everything, they're, they're, the sky was full of these things. And they were zapping people left and right. And these people became like these puppets once it was all finished. But then later on in life, the Lord showed me what happens to the soul. The soul is pushed out. Can you imagine a person going into nothing but blackness where they can never come back to their families or anybody else? They're just pushed into blackness and something else took over. Something else occupied the person. So a lot of people, and this is what I believe, a lot of people are going to become soulless, very soulless. These things will then have their own family members in that person on the earth, right? That's not going to be good. 
These will, if you have you ever noticed in Revelation how that they blasphemed God and those that dwell in the heavens and they knew so much about the living God and the plagues and they were blaming God for all of the plagues, it's because they were familiar with the scripture, which means most of those folks fell away. They fell away. It's like a divorce. Uh, somebody gets a divorce and the spouse has all the goods on the other person. It's kind of like that. At any rate, billions of people are marked that way. Billions. When that begins, that just won't be a good day for those who are you know, stuck here. Somebody said, do these people know that they're soulless? No, their souls are pricked out into perdition, into condemnation, into blackness. And their bodies were left here on this earth and something else took over the bodies. But their souls went into torment with the snap of a finger. So these, these things pushed the souls of the people out of their bodies. Though the souls of those people went directly into torment, and then these other things came in and occupied the person. So nobody outside of that person knew it was a, you know, say for example, a dad of a family. It could happen and nobody would ever know. It happened to the dad of that family. It could happen to a wife and nobody would ever know what happened to that wife. The soul of the person pushed out, that soul immediately goes. They go into torment. Immediately. They go right into torment. While the body of the person is being occupied by something else close to their families. Okay, folks. We're back here. Anyway. Somebody says, oh, the abductees who accepted the Lord is still in danger. Yes, if, if they have not taken certain steps, they are in danger. They're in grave danger. Which is why part of my calling is something I was thrust into, whether people accept that or not. Some of those folks who have been through these extraordinary circumstances, I use keywords a lot. I use small things that only a person who has been through that would know, would, would comprehend. I can tell you that uh, what's happening is not in a person's head. No. I can also tell you that you don't want to know the details or the facts behind it. You do not want to know because it would cause too much in you. You don't want to know. The narrative you have now is that aliens are coming or something is coming taking people, tampering with their genetics, fine. That is nothing compared to what's actually at risk here. Right? At any rate, those people, those people caught in this issue, right? they don't think they have a way out. And the other half of the people, they love it. They love it because they finally feel needed and accepted. So they love it. They love it. Lord have mercy. So as you can see, as you can see, Satan has been very busy for a very long time getting everybody prepped so that when the time comes, they will respond accordingly. What they don't know, uh, what those people don't know, is that if they're given over to the point where they accept the mark of the beast or the number of his name or something of that nature, there is no coming back, nor is there repentance from that. All right. Somebody said making his army, yes, that's precisely what he's doing. I Personally, I believe that army is, for the most part, made. I believe that army is uh, complete. We're going into a brand new phase of things. It's my honor to have as many prepared as possible. All right, guys. Somebody says, so if 
They are related to fallen angels. They are super conductive. No. And the angels have been described as lightning. No. To say something is super conductive is a human term, a label, right? It's a, some, something that we can figure out that we're trying to solve or trying to assign properties to something spiritual from what we can touch and what we can examine is a serious mistake. We don't have enough knowledge to categorize that. There are people right now who work with metals, metals that defy everything because those metals, right, have been touched by these things. And so let me tell you something. If these things get a hold of, of standard metal, they will taint that metal. That metal will no longer perform as it did before. It's going to have a, a total change of properties. we got to be careful not to assign the, this human knowledge system as though we're experts on what they are. We're not. We're we are, in fact, dodos to what they are. We don't know what they are. Let's go ahead and admit that to these, uh, uh, the, these beings, these things out there. We don't know. We don't know anything about them. So be careful because, folks, let's go ahead and face it. We live in a time where people want to be the most intellectual person in the room. And they start making up Jesse Jackson terms, right? I use that reference because he was known for making up you know, rhetoric as he spoke, making up words that were not in the lexicon, so on and so forth. But we got to be careful not to do that. To say an angel is superconductive, hyperconductive, that's irrelevant, redundant, and that, that's somewhat foolish, right? Because we don't know. We don't know what their makeup is. We do not know what their makeup is. And we can solve that now. You ready? Where does lightning begin at? Standard lightning. Where does it start from? Anybody know? Where does lightning start from? Anybody? Give it your best guess. Where do you where do you think lightning begins from? Where do you think it starts? Somebody says the ground. Where do you think it starts? Somebody says friction. Where do you think the origination point of lightning starts? Where do you think it comes from? A lot of people saying ground, it begins with the sprite grid. It's something called a sprite grid. Don't try and look it up. It's a sprite grid. Have you ever noticed that lightning, you can have one flash of lightning, right? And then about 20 seconds later, you can have another flash of lightning that's exactly like the first flash. Following a known path, isn't it? Yes, it is. Plasma, right? They know what plasma follows. Plasma follows sound. Harmonics. Right? The origination point of lightning is not the ground not the origination point. It's well outside of the reach of all of our missiles and vessels and everything else. How do we know that? Because it leaves a pattern match above it every single time. Every single time it leaves a pattern match. It also rips something in the atmosphere that if you had the proper optics, you can actually see something that looks like a tear and it would be visible for at least 45 minutes. Once you start seeing things like that, that really makes you think, how do I fit into all of this? Okay, who says what? Wait a minute, let's go back. No, you, you, you. Brother Mike, was the eclipse caused by something other than the moon? No, it was caused by the living God. That was the Lord's doing. That wasn't man's doing. Nobody interfered with anything. How did they know that? Because they recorded that from over, it had to be over 65 different things recording the eclipse, Right? The model for this eclipse started many years ago. And the moon was on 
Listen, because you can track, because we have computers now. Listen to this. You can forecast, because the moon is so precise in its movements, you can forecast exactly where the moon is going to be with computers, right? When you do that with computers, it does not deviate. Not one iota. It doesn't. You can forecast it. So that means something was put into motion at the beginning and it has stayed its course since the beginning. That, my friends, is an awesome thing. And that's what modeling can get you. They measure the moon. There are, there are four or five different laser arrays on the moon. Right, The counterpart is Earth. The other counterparts are on satellites. They do this to measure the movement of the moon. The moon is highly hyper-precise in what it does. So when it was set in motion a long time ago, it keeps its course. It will not deviate from its course. Right? It does what it has to do. And they know that by way of physics, the moon should not be there. It should have been knocked out of orbit a long time ago. But it's not. See, the moon makes micro-adjustments. Did you guys know that? Micro-adjustments it makes. All by its lonesome. So when it says, God made the heavens and the earth, I for one do not believe anything concerning the textbooks that most of you guys are familiar with. I don't believe that. I do not believe that the core of the earth is just formed by itself. I believe that what we're dealing with here is something akin to the human cell in a body. That's what I think we're dealing with. Something akin to that. And from spectral feedback, a lot of people are coming up with a very different idea as to what the core of the earth actually is. A very different, in fact, the ideas are so radical, they will not print it until 2026 in the, in the school's uh, uh, curriculum, in the books of schools. They won't print that until 2026. It is highly, highly, um, it, it just does not match what the model people are used to right now. It's kind of like the earth and its rotation in, 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 um, how we go throughout this galaxy. You may not know this, but the formulas that govern, even in the modeling that governs the orbit of Earth, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. The only way you can properly model this solar system without a hiccup is to add a secondary star. That's the only way. The only way. That takes up for the perturbations and the mass loss in the sun itself. You guys do know the sun is missing 99% of its mass. You know that, right? You start getting into inertia and orbital velocities, right? And some of the um, uh, um, uh, physics that intertwine with that, you start finding out that there's a mass offset in our, in our solar system, right? It is the reason some of the planets go into retrograde, because that was set in motion a long time ago. And then when you model that, you begin to see the forces like fluid dynamics work, and it's, it's offset to a large degree. The only way to make it work is to have a secondary mass object out there, right? Even through observations of most of the configurations in space, most have more than one star. Most solar systems have more than one star. It seems to be the general rule out there. But man tends to be the expert of what he can see. And he only saw one sun. Okay, folks, where were we? Where were we? Ooh, what was that? Oop, oop. Boy, Mixler is touchy. Can I be a uh, Mixler, you guys, if you're listening, because you did last time, right? The, the um, There's a problem with your chat, just so you know that. I wrote you guys an email. There's an issue with it. Can't say it out loud. People will exploit it, but there's an issue with it. Issue. No, anyway, anyway, back to the, back to mankind, defining who God is. That's the practice 
that has man. If, if you guys take note of something, every time a person attempts to, doesn't matter who it is, but every time a person attempts to assign properties to angelic beings, to these things in a spiritual realm, they end up in the wrong place within themselves. And the reason for that is our father is a father of truth, right? When we speculate about things like that, we can easily dishonor all things of the heavens when we are wrong. In this case, being wrong is a big deal because we have forgotten what we represent. Each one of you, you represent an entire race. Do you know that? Each one. Each one. Each one of you represents an entire race. Now let me ask you something. How are you going to begin that race? Cursed or blessed? Because if you think you're here by yourself and there's nothing after you, you're wrong. Will you handle life? has great meaning. How you handle pain has great meaning. How you handle joy has great meaning. Okay, back to the original uh, conversation here, guys. So, as I said before at the beginning of this conversation, it is my fault I drifted away from one of the core concerns of which I'm called. Right? It is not, I don't do what I do to chase UFOs or talk about fallen angels. God put people in place for that. I've had my tangible dealings. I desire not to have those tangible dealings anymore. Right? Right? But it is incredibly important, incredibly important that we understand. Satan is preparing everybody he can for war, right? That's incredible. The one in COT, don't take offense to that. That was a general statement I made, not directed solely towards you, right? That's for all of us. All of us have to be careful of that because all of us do that. So don't take that upon yourself. Don't do that. Okay? To to. To be the expert on who God is, on what angels are, is foolishness. It is foolishness. It's, it's very foolish. You know who said that last? Jesus of Nazareth said that last. He said it was foolish. He said it was very foolish. And it is. Because that, that realm is forbidden to us. We can speculate all day. But here's what I'm saying. If you love the Lord, if you honor the Father, please don't speculate about the kingdom of God. Honor him. See, that'd be like somebody speculating about you or about me, right? If they get it wrong, it, it can easily dishonor us, correct? Right? If somebody says, well, I think Mike has an afro. I don't have an afro. That would deeply dishonor the whole bald thing. Right? It's the same thing. When we do that to the Father's kingdom, it also means we're thinking haphazardly. And I'll tell you something. When it comes to the Father's kingdom and the Father, right? Because I'm known for doing this. I have thoughts of the living God randomly in certain places. It doesn't matter where I am. I will hit a knee in, in respect of him. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I can go to my knees in a heartbeat. It does not matter where I'm at. I'm not one of those who will speculate about what Christ looks like, what the kingdom and all this looks like. I'm not taking that step. I personally, right, personally see that as a huge step of dishonor. And I know we're children. I know that we do things like that, right? But let's leave the Father's kingdom in holiness and not tainted with our human ways that we do here on this earth. We have gotten free with these things, right? We've gotten a little too free. And because there's no consequence, no correction, we think it's okay. By way of the Holy Spirit, we, can, we have that feedback. And we know when things are not okay, right? People are losing their fear of the Lord. 
the respect and awe of the living God. If all of us truly feared the living God, then how could any of us commit sin? Think about it. When we commit sin, it's because we're pushing God out of our lives. Don't we? For that moment, we push him out. That's the only way we can be complicit with sin. Because when we're back in the when we're back in the fold, we can't stand the sin we just did. Right? So instead of having a practice of, of saying what we think the Father's kingdom is, let's honor the Father and his kingdom, leave it in holiness, that we don't taint it with our tongue, that we don't misquote something. Or totally get something wrong because the gets of we have a chance to deem it holy and to keep it as such by keeping our words from it, right? We have an opportunity here. But if we humanize the living God, that's when we start describing things we have no knowledge of. And Jesus said that we both intrude in areas we know nothing of and talk about things that no man has ever seen yet. And that we should refrain from doing those things. These are these are just people habits that we have, right? But what I'm saying is, let's step it up to a new standard of truth, true honor. True honor and reverence for the living God. N nothing staged, not this made up stuff, but the real deal. And if we don't have that, Let's instill that first within ourselves to get ourselves in a rightful position, right? But that may be extended among others. Just because the world adopts ways does not mean we should. Right? You know what I mean, though. I encourage people to do that all the time. I'm not telling anybody to do it. I encourage people to think about it, to just think about it. Just think about it. You know, I say that from a point of view because I've had a lot of people attempt to describe me, and all of them have been wrong. They have. One person thought for sure they described me right, and when I told them they didn't describe me right, they cursed me out. Right? You see? So if we can refrain from doing that, please try and hear me. If we can refrain, right, and only describe those things we have hands-on experience with, we're going to learn like never before. That's when we experience vision. See, when we step into the realm of truth, right, anything we're lacking, the Lord will ensure we have. But if we act like we already have it, I know the Father will not release it so long as we're acting like we have it. But here's the deal, though. We have to step right through our own pride to be like that. We do. We have to step through our own personal pride to do that. We have to step through our own habits, right? Our own what I think and, and all these, what, what do I think about this type of attitude? We have to step through that. And if we don't know about it, simply leave it alone, right? If, if we only had the ability to talk about those things we had experience with, we, our language would just, you know, condense big time. But, in this day and age, because of competition, right? Because of the internet, because of videos, because of having a voice, period. Let's go ahead and face it. Lots of people are in competition. Jealousy starts stirring. Uh, one person may say, well, I have that same knowledge. Why is that person recognized over me when I knew it before they did? Right? So people get into this, I knew it before they did thing. I was the first one. I was the only one, right? Look what I did. All of us have to be careful of those things. I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't have anything to help anybody with without the Lord giving it to me. I am not the origin of anything good. 
I'm not. I'm not. My personal ideas stink. They just don't match up. And plus, there's too many incomplete areas. Right? Just like you guys know that. I do not trust my own wisdom. I do not trust my own knowledge. I do trust in the living God. I do trust in the resolve of Christ. I do. And hopefully we can, all of us, right? All of us can uh, get there like that. So we can be a bit more authentic. That's where we should be. You're good to go. You guys are good to go. It's just an encouragement. That's all. Just an encouragement. That's all that is. I don't know about you guys, but I can always do better, right? I can always do better. Let's see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. Let's see where are we at now. Somebody said we all know ones like that. No one like too many pastors to preaching prosperity gospel. Well, yeah, they do. They, you know what? You know what's a bigger shame? Not one pastor should ever have to ask for anything. Though. Churches don't run from air. We know that. Here's something you may not know. This might floor you, right? It's a good homework assignment. You ready? When we're in this earth and we looked for a miracle and it didn't come, the question is, did it come or not? Here, here's why I say that. The Lord put us here, and if you read in the New Testament, he put his power in us. He himself, he put his power in us. He even has people wait until someone is sent. Hear me on this. Which means, he put us in each other's care. Do you hear me? He put us in each other's care. He did. When Jesus was protected in the streets and nobody could come and touch him, it was because of the crowds. The people took care of Christ, didn't they? They took care of the disciples, didn't they? God puts us in each other's care. It'd be nice if he would do that directly. But if, if God could, would, would disclose or give us things directly, we would not humble ourselves that we would need one another. So let's go ahead and face that fact. That the Lord put his answer in you. He did. He put a lot of himself in you. You know what that means? I'm at your service. That's what that means. And he put some things in me for you. And so then that means for a pastor with a congregation. He put the pastor in the congregation's hands and vice versa. A pastor should never have to ask for a dime. But here's the issue. How many people act on the spirit regardless of your situation think about that see if we all did how many times are we prompted by the spirit to do things but we don't do them you know how many times I caught myself hmm? do you guys remember how many times I caught myself not acting on the spirit but having reservations. Do hmm? you know how many times? And you know it's the Lord because you begin to fight with it. Isn't that funny? You have a fight in your own brain about it. Right? So here's the deal. If people would act on truth, there'll be no need for any prosperity ministries to rise in the first place. Now, yes, some of them are, I got you, pastors, they are. Right? They are. 
But here's the bad part. When you have a good pastor who clearly has needs for that church, right? How does he, except for praying to the Lord, how does he continue? Unless he makes that request known to the people. Because the people are hesitant in acting because they don't know who is who. If, if the congregation could see clearly, it'd be a bit different. It would. Be a bit different. And if some of these shepherds would be highly responsible, it'd be a bit different, right? We all know things are wrong. But if God put the pastor in the people's hands and it's up to the people to pray for that pastor. Okay, let's, let's use me without money. With the things we cover in the word of God, sometimes they're useful to you guys, right? So what do you think would happen if you did not need me? I'll tell you what would happen. There'd be no need for that word to come forward. The food would stop. That's what would happen. If I'm not needed, right, the food is going to stop. God does what he does by necessity. That's why he said he'll supply all of our needs uh, according to his riches and glory. All of our needs, not our wants, our needs. So the day I'm not needed, the flow is going to halt. If it were just me, just me, just me, Right? If it were just me, I would have no desire to be here on this earth. I'm here because of my heart towards people. The Lord showed me what I am to do. He also showed me it was not an easy path. He already showed me the calamitous things. Many have come to pass. He already showed me I would have to give up what most people enjoy the most in the earth. You know, he showed me that prior to doing any of this. When I was still in high school, the Lord showed me that I would be called and that it would cost me everything. He showed me that. He showed me that 24 times. Do you know that? He showed me a series of things 24 times in my lifetime. It is embedded in me so deeply that when things happen, they're just simply normal. Some things are stomach droppers. But most importantly, he showed me what I would lose. He showed me the arguments of people. He showed me the embarrassment. He showed me the ridicule. He showed me what was happening behind the scenes. He showed me that it would not be favorable. It's not going to be favorable for me. It will take everything, everything. So what makes a person say yes? Because he also showed me on my left side a bunch of people coming in. And they looked like they had a hard life and children were coming in with the mothers. And these people had passed from death to another plane, period. And the folks that were coming in, that were coming into the bosom of the Almighty, were so beaten and battered. He showed me how the conversation would build in the world and it would slip and people would laugh at Yahshua HaMashiach, how they would mock him and kill his people and then go and kill the Christians who wrought or who developed or who by reason of their prayers caused harsh conditions to be on the earth. Yes, that means people of the world are going to blame you for what they're about to go through. It'll be like a malicious hunting all of you. All who believe. He already showed me that. When I saw that, I saw the people suffering. I said, Lord, I have to do something. Give me something to do. And you know what he did? He gave me another dream. He did. It was a girl in the back room screaming her lungs out. The room was red. She was screaming. And a voice clearly said, go and get her. And when I looked back there, it was a demonic, the most demonic thing you could ever see. Holding that girl hostage, about to rip her from arm to arm, limb to limb. The girl couldn't have been more than four years old. 
And the Lord said, go and get the little girl. Now, this is all a dream. So I went and ran and got the girl, and I was scared to death. I started running, and I made a beeline out the back door. And I was like, where do I go? This thing is pursuing me. And I knew I had to go up these steps, which went up, and then they turned upside down. And then spikes were hanging down. These were impossible obstacles. And I had to get this person from that back room up into this other platform, and I had to go through impossible things. He showed me how to get through the impossible obstacles. Just keep going forward. Keep your heart in love and keep going forward. He even showed me that the person I would carry to that place of freedom would fight me every step of the way. They would not cooperate, but I was not to put them down. I would be frustrated. I would think it impossible. And every time, every time I would pay attention in the dream, I'd gotten through more obstacles. The Lord was taking me through obstacles. It wasn't by my strength. He was working it out somehow. I would find myself on the next level. Then the little, the little girl, I set the little girl down. And this old man was in a house and he had a sword on the wall and words were going up and down that sword. Up and down that sword. He didn't touch it. And the little girl was let down and he called the little girl over. And he opened the back door and when he did, the girl went and stepped out the back door and the grass came up to meet her feet. And she took another step and it happened again. It was paradise back there. And I, I, I got emotional. I'm in the dream. I got emotional. I wanted to go where the girl went. I did not want to be on earth at that point. No, he wouldn't let me see. He shut the door in my face. He said, no. Not until you've gotten the rest I'm assigning you to get. That's exactly what he said. I even saw that thing that was chasing me in the walls, and he said he has no power here. But he told me he would pursue anybody. He would pursue anybody who would take from him. He gave me a certain number of people I was to get, and the last one was very special. Do you not know that dream? That's that dream with all those individuals in there. I've met every single last one of those people. Only one is current, and it's the last one for me. The Lord will show you your plight. It only requires sincerity. Sincerity. When you're sincere, You'll find that the Lord has been sincere. But please don't allow, allow this world to desensitize what holiness is in your life. Observe holiness. God establishes holiness. We can observe it. We can also honor it. We can act in it, but make no mistake. We did not create holiness. The Most High did. Too many are conforming to the standards of this world. And what's about to happen, they cannot get free from. And it will be devastating. Like an unending curse. And many people will become with that word unfair. Then even that will turn to sheer terror. And that's not to be you. All of you who believe in Christ, he is your answer. He's your only answer. Okay. Off that subject, back on another. So folks, hear me on this. You know what Satan is doing? It's what I believe he's doing. He's preparing human vessels for war. How does he do that? He gets a person to curse anything holy. He gets a person to disagree with the resolve of Christ. He gets a person to say within themselves, Christ does not love me or something of that nature. When a person says that, they start believing that. They open their hearts up to the alternative. 
And it's by way of that alternative people will be taken over. Somebody says, I wonder when Mike will meet the final one in the dream. I already have. I know it's the final one. It's already in progress. It is the hardest of them all. It is impossible. Somebody says, Brother Michael, smart does be an issue. It's kind of been an issue. Microbial components have been a factor for a long time. Right? Uh, they, they, it's kind of like when they put together the uh, transistor. It's kind of like that. Most people think of robots in terms of everything fitted and joined together into one place, right? Think of this. Instead of thinking of a robot with bolts and screws and everything else holding it together, think of a robot in different, you know, floating different components. Think of it that way. It's like bringing two components together to do a specific or perform a specific function in the human body. Suppose you had two gases. And they reacted together, right? And so you spray those gases in the atmosphere in two different parts of the world. And so you have this half of the world who becomes saturated with one type of gas. And you get those on the opposite side of the world who become saturated with another type of gas. Then all of a sudden you let the gates down. They begin to meet. Every time they meet, the gases begin to interact. Now, they don't know this. But they have essentially completed the assembly of something. They did that. That's how evil people work. That's what they're doing. You may ask, who's doing their dirty work? You are. They're not doing it. You're doing it. And they do have promises in return. Okay, folks, listen, you guys do have that, right? Satan's big plan. Here's what that means, um, especially this week coming up. In the book of Revelation, all that's uncovered. His motivations, what he's doing. And, and listen, specifically in the New Testament, it outlines how Satan is converting people. But he converts people in a way where they they truly do believe that they're not converted. Now you got to hear me on this. They honestly believe they're on the Lord's side. You see how difficult that is. Can you imagine having a person who's totally against the living God, truly believe in their hearts that what they're doing is for the living God? Remember, Jesus told us. The Bible tells us. They're going to call good evil and evil good. They're going to kill you and think that they doeth God a service, is what the Bible says. Right? Well, he actually was talking about his own people, which is happening now. If he was talking about the Jews, the physical Jews, they would kill you and think they doeth God a service. Then that sentiment is in the world already. Of destroying the, too many Christian people talk against the Jews. And they really do think that they're doing God a service. Don't they? Hmm? Anyway, you have it. But there we are. Here we are. Somebody say, can you explain why, this, why the uh, sun looks hexagonal near the eclipse and after? Is it a simulator? No, the sun's not a simulator. Yes, there's a reason it looks hexagonal. It is. Now, not everybody sees that. Not everybody. Right? you got to remember something. Your body, is, is, it works off a base, a known base system. Right? Which means it's interpretation of things. It's also known, which is how people can be highly manipulated. Is the sun a simulator? No, I would say no. The real question is, is the sun hot? It's a better question. 
Is it hot? But is that promise to blow your minds? And so before this year is up, before this year is gone, we will have learned a few things. All right, folks, I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. Plus, I feel like I'm about to collapse. I'm so incredibly tired. It's not funny, right? It's not funny. Again, just in case you missed it, next week we go up to uh, the higher speeds as far as our bandwidth is concerned. So that should save us a significant amount of headaches. It should. It should. It'll be about... uh, Five times what we have now. Folks, God bless each of you. If the player turns on at midnight or thereafter, you guys know what that is. You know what that is. But with that, if I don't see you tonight, I'll definitely see you guys tomorrow to go over some weather issues with you guys and some more things. We'll go over quite a bit. And I can't get into too much right now because it will just get all jumbled up in my own brain. Okay, it will. God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.